Big news from the Federal Trade Commission, Dad. We have a $3.3 million enforcement against Passport Automotive Group. This this feels eerily similar to earlier this year. We had the Napleton Automotive Group, Mm -hmm. a $10 million fine. We had uh, here in Maryland, Coons Automotive Group, a $1 million fine. Passport Automotive, what did they do, Dad? And why $3.3 million? Where's the money going? Uh, Well, the money is allegedly going back to those who were harmed. Um, And and what they got busted for is they would advertise prices for vehicles. And then when customers went in to pick up the vehicles or to purchase the vehicles, well, that's when the customers were hit with the fact that there were reconditioning fees or certification fees or or, or pre-delivery inspection fees. Um, and doing it that way is, well, illegal. They're considered junk fees. The, all those fees, all those costs should be factored into the selling price as you're asking for it. Yep. Um, one of the other things that they were doing is they were discriminating against Black and Latino customers by charging them higher fees and higher interest rates on their loans than they were on white customers. Um, so it, it, it just goes back to a situation where they weren't being upfront, transparent, and honest with their customers. And, well, it's going to cost them $3.3 million in fines. Now, of course, they've admitted no wrongdoing. Absolutely. That's part <laughs> because, of the course. Because that's the way we do it in this country. They've admitted no wrongdoing, but they have agreed to pay $3.38 million to refund the customers that have been harmed by the passports, uh, Passport Auto Group. So let's let's run through this really quick. And Passport has what, like nine, ten dealerships in They've the quite Washington, a few, D.C. area? In the DMV, which is D.C., Maryland, Maryland Virginia. Virginia. And yes. again, Napleton, when this happened earlier this year, it was literally like the same exact thing. It was discrimination yeah. against yes. uh, uh, minority customers. Yes. And it was um, charging illegal fees. Yes. And it was a $10 million case that time in Chicago or in Illinois, excuse me. Thinking about getting auto insurance? Compare quotes from all the major carriers in one place. Join YAA.com slash insurance. It's quick, easy, and no spam. Now this time, Dad, and let's just read through kind of the enforcement. Like mm-hmm. what 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 is happening? 3.3 is the headline, but let's keep going through it. Passport, their president and their vice president, they agreed to the proposed federal court order that would prohibit them from charging different groups different markups. This is interesting. Let's read through this. The order would require Passport to establish a fair lending program to ensure it does not discriminate going forward, including a provision that will require each Passport dealership location to either charge no financing markup or charge the same markup rate to all consumers. Uh, I'll help you with that. It's going to be the latter. They're going to charge the same markup to all consumers. Yep. The the other point here is yes. prohibit them from deceiving consumers about prices and fees. The order would prohibit Passport from misrepresenting the cost or terms to buy, lease, or finance a car or whether a fee char- or charge is optional. It would also require them to only charge consumers fees with their expenses, or, excuse mm-hmm. me, with their express informed consent. Makes this sense. feels eerily similar to the newly proposed FTC rules to yes. get rid of shady car dealer tactics. And this was maybe the one, if you haven't watched our videos on that or read about that, check the links down below. Also just Google search FTV, FTC shady dealer rules and you'll see it. This is what maybe like was the one area where you could get kind of frustrated by the FTC proposing these new rules. It's like you already have them on the books. Like just, these are literally the same rules, just, just enforce, enforce them. them. And, and what this shows is that there are more enforcement actions today than what we've been accustomed to in the past. It says right here, Dad, in the press release, in the last 10 years alone, the FTC has brought more than 50 law enforcement actions related to automobiles and helped lead two nationwide law enforcement sweeps that include 181 state-level enforcement actions in these areas. So you're right. There are more actions that are coming down. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another one here before the end of the year. And it was interesting, Dad. The commission who essentially... It was. The commission that that voted on these yes. um, uh, this outcome on this settlement, four to one vote. It was interesting because each of the commission commission people commissioners commissioners. Thank you. Not a good look for me there. Commissioners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> seem that hard. <laughs> each of the commissioners, Dad, wrote statements talking about why they chose the side that they chose. It was a four to one vote, mm-hmm. and there was one dissenting vote. And even in reading the dissenting opinion. He pretty much agreed with everything. He just thought, like, from a legal standpoint, it was an overreach. A, le- he- a, le- a legal technical standpoint yeah. that it's, you know, that, that that you're reading that you have too much abilities within the confines of the of the uh, statute. 
Yeah. But everyone agreed. agreed. <laughs> everyone agreed. Everyone was like, this doesn't make sense. Now, there was one other piece to this yes. that really wasn't enforced, but it was just highlighted. Did you find this? I found this kind of interesting. Which piece? The fact that dad passport mailed out 21,000 fake Recall yes. notices. Look yes. at this. Did you see this? Yes. They sent out these bright red direct mailers to 21,000 passport customers saying urgent recall notice when there wasn't a recall. They weren't fine for this. They, they like The FTC just kind of dropped this in the press release. Like this dealer group discriminates against certain customers. Yeah. They also charge junk fees. We enforced rules against that. By the way, they sent out 21,000 <laughs> fake recall notices. What? Yes, it's in order to get the customers to come in so that they could find other things that would would need to be repaired that were not under the recall itself. Well, since there was no recall, that, that wouldn't have been repaired by the manufacturer in any way. So, uh, yeah, they were just trolling for business. Yeah, and yeah. it was a marketing company that also got tied up in this uh, Temecula Equity Group, OverflowWorks.com. This is stupid, guys. This is stupid. If this is your way to justify drumming up sales, how do you go to bed at night? Um, they probably don't think about it at night. Which is terrible, man. Terrible. Yeah, that's that's why typically a lot of the direct mail pieces from automobile dealers are just nonsense. 7,000 of them went out to Toyota or owners. 14,000 went on out to Nissan owners in June of 2017. Just not a good look for car dealers nationwide. And thankfully, the FTC took some action here. Let's remind everyone, reportfraud.gov. Dot FTC dot gov. Report fraud dot FTC dot gov. That'll take you to the page where you can report fraud. Mm -hmm. And that's where these actions come from. Our consumers making their voices heard. Yep, absolutely. And we need to see more enforcements like this moving forward. Absolutely. Yep.